Hi, I'm Melissa Maker. Welcome to the Clean My Space channel. I'm an accidental cleaning expert, which means I hate cleaning, but I somehow got myself into the whole cleaning game. You can learn all about that in another video. But in this video, I want to talk about the famous or infamous cleaning hack because some of them suck and they actually waste your time and your money. They don't work, but some of them, some of them are amazing. So in this video, I'm going to share with you 21 cleaning hacks that actually work. Baking soda plus a sponge equals a DIY magic eraser. Now, when I started my cleaning company in 2006, I figured this out pretty quickly. It saved me a lot of money. I just took a sprinkle of baking soda and put it in my left palm, had a damp sponge in my right palm, and I just dipped the corner into the baking soda, tapped it off, and then I would go to a wall or a baseboard where there was a scuff, a fingerprint, a mark, or even a little grease spot. And I always checked in an inconspicuous area first just to make sure that I wasn't ruining anyone's paint. Didn't need to deal with that. But once I knew that it was fine, I would give a gentle scrub in a circular motion to the stained area. And then I would take a clean damp cloth and wipe the baking soda off to get rid of any of that residue. Voila, done and very inexpensive. Many years ago, you might have seen a popular recipe going around Pinterest called the Dawn Miracle Cleaner. It was essentially two parts hydrogen peroxide, one part Dawn dish soap. Now it can be any dish soap, quite frankly, although Dawn does work really well, so do other dish soaps. The most important thing here is that you treat the stain the way you would treat any stain. So first you remove all the stain material first by scraping and blotting. You always wanna treat a dry stain. Then you can apply this stain remover product using a cleaning toothbrush, gently brush it in. You don't wanna overuse product because you're gonna to have to do more cleaning up afterward anyway. And then just have a clean cloth with water so that you can quickly blot and rinse that stain area. This is one of those areas that you would wanna test in an inconspicuous area first before you take it and remove a stain, say on a piece of clothing, on a sofa or on a carpet. If you have stinky shoes, don't be embarrassed. It's part of the human condition. There's a great way to get rid of that shoe stank. Take a couple of cotton balls and your favorite essential oil, or if you wanna get real fancy, you can mix a couple of your favorites together and just dash about 10 to 15 drops of your essential oils or a combo on each cotton ball. Then place them in the shoes, leave them overnight, and when you take the cotton balls out in the morning, your shoes will smell like essential oils and not like cheese. If you're looking for a pliable ice pack, those blue bricks just aren't gonna cut it for you. Instead, you can make your own by getting yourself a zipper lock freezer bag and using a two to one ratio of water to rubbing alcohol. So for example, if you have a one gallon zipper lock bag, you can add two cups of water and one cup of rubbing alcohol. When you seal the bag, you wanna make sure you get as much air out of it as possible. You're gonna stick that in the freezer and because rubbing alcohol is rubbing alcohol, it won't fully freeze, meaning that the water will be frozen. The rubbing alcohol will help keep everything bendable and moldable. So that way, if you have jaw surgery or a bruise, you can easily wrap that bag around wherever the ice is needed. If you have horizontal or vertical blinds, rubbing alcohol can help you clean them very quickly. Now, over time, they get done dusty and a little bit dirty. So here's the quick fix. Just put plain rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle or a little spritzer and get yourself an old sports sock. Flip it inside out, stick your hand in so you make a little sock puppet. Then you're going to flip your blinds over to one side so they lay flat and give them a good spray with rubbing alcohol. Now I like to work section by section when I do this. So I might spray the first three and then continue to move my way down. I'm talking about horizontal blinds here. Then take that sock, wrap it around the slat and gently pull it to the side. The rubbing alcohol helps loosen up dirt and dust and it makes light work of cleaning. If you've ever been in the shower, looked up and noticed that the water is not coming out straight down or straight out, but it's kind of shooting in different directions. That's a really good indication that your shower head has hard water buildup. This is nothing to feel bad about. It's perfectly normal and natural, but it is annoying. And it means that your shower head is not gonna work as efficiently as you would like it to. Very easy fix for this is to fill a plastic bag with plain white vinegar. Make sure there are no holes in it. That would be a real bummer. And then affix it to the shower head with an elastic band. Leave it overnight. The vinegar will help to break down all of those little pieces of hard water 
buildup that had been stuck in the shower head over time. Then the next morning, just remove the vinegar, dump it down the drain, run the shower head, and you'll see immediately, you'll notice a difference. Now, if you're still having some issues, you can take uh, either a little cleaning toothbrush or a cloth and just gently give a scrub, and that will help to lift off any of the residual hard water buildup. This also will work really well on a faucet head if needed. If you notice your towels are getting crunchy, smelly, or just nasty overall, there's an easy way to refresh them. We'll be running two cycles. The first cycle will be hot water with one cup of white vinegar. When that's done, you'll do a second load, which will be hot water with one cup of baking soda. This will knock out any buildup in the towels and bring them back to life. Pool noodles now have uses all year round, not just for swimming in the pool, which is something I'm kind of thinking about, especially considering it's now snowing where I live. But the reason pool noodles can be used all year round is because they are absolutely great for keeping your boots in shape. And while you might not think this is important, consider this. If you've ever put on a pair of boots and they've started to bunch and wrinkle at the ankles, well, that's because they're not being kept in shape when you're not wearing them. And if you're investing good money in a pair of boots, I like to do that because I'd rather buy really good boots, have them last me for many years instead of a cheaper pair of boots and have them not last me. You wanna keep the actual leg part of the boot standing up for as long as possible because that will mean the leather is in better shape and it won't get bunchy and wrinkly. So take your pool noodle, cut it to size, make a pair, and then when you're not wearing your boots, stuff the pool noodle inside and it will keep your boots upright and long lasting. To clean your greasy overhead exhaust filter, just boil up a kettle full of water and add your scoop of OxyClean to a bucket. You're gonna put a gallon of hot water in here and this, this should be a party trick, honestly. Take out your filter from the overhead exhaust compartment and just dunk it into the bucket filled with the solution. I left this for just about a minute before I flipped it over. And look at this, it just came out so clean. It was amazing. It only takes a minute or so. And once you're done, you can rinse it and just lay it flat to dry. It's way better than the alternative, replacing it. If your stainless steel mug looks and smells a little bit funky, baking soda can solve that problem for you. Fill the mug up halfway with hot water. Then you can add a tablespoon of baking soda to that solution. Fill the rest of the mug up with hot water and just let it soak. You can let it soak overnight. And the next morning, you can take a sponge, a bottle cleaning brush, or even a microfiber cloth, get it wet and start to give it a good scrub. The baking soda in there, that abrasion, will help to lift out any of those stains. By the time you rinse it, you won't see stains, you won't smell smells. Resident pot washers take note. This trick actually worked incredibly well. It certainly exceeded my expectations, so I hope you give it a try. Grab a piece of tin foil, either one that you've just used to cook with, there's a great way to upcycle, or a brand new one. Crumple it up into a ball, add a little bit of dish soap and water to your pot or pan, and start scrubbing. You'll see all of that stuff starts to lift off. You might love this so much, you never want to buy another metal scrubby again. Just as a general rule, whenever I bring home a new pair of earrings, I always clean the post and the backing with rubbing alcohol. So I add a little bit to a cotton pad and I just quickly clean that so that I feel good and safe about using them on my body. But rubbing alcohol can do a lot more for jewelry. Now, just to be clear, not for all types of jewelry. This is specifically for gold and silver jewelry and specifically for jewelry with stones that can tolerate this kind of cleaning. So stones are fine but costume jewelry and pearl jewelry, not okay. So the cool thing is if you have like rings on your finger and you're constantly putting on hand cream, you know that they get a little bit dull and lackluster. Think about doing this. Put your jewelry into about a half cup of rubbing alcohol. If you wanna be a little extra special, you can add a teaspoon of dish soap, stir this combo together, let everything sit for a few minutes, fish it out, plug your sink, and use a cleaning toothbrush to gently scrub. Then rinse and dry and honestly, they will sparkle like the night sky, like a firecracker, like the day he proposed. 
pick your thing. They're gonna sparkle, they're gonna look great. Vinegar also helps out when you're doing your laundry and you can use it as a laundry booster. So quite simply, a laundry booster helps your detergent work better. So you don't have to buy anything fancy, you can just use white vinegar. And you can put it into the little pre-rinse compartment if you have one, or you can put it into your machine as it's filling up with water. And you just let that soak. Now, what I do is I, I put my detergent into my machine and then I just pour a bunch of vinegar in all the different compartments. The bleach compartment, the fabric softener compartment, pre-wash, whatever I've got, vinegar goes in there because it helps lighten or brighten fabrics depending on the color that your fabrics are, it helps soften your fabrics, and it also helps deodorize them. So if anything's a little bit stinky, vinegar is going to help out. Then you can just take your clothes, either hang them to dry or put them in the dryer, and you will notice a difference. Now, don't worry, your clothes are not going to come out smelling like vinegar. One of the things that so many of you love the Clean My Space channel for is effective DIY recipes, and this has to be one of my favorites. It's an all-purpose scrub that I love using in the bathroom. You can also use it in the kitchen or anywhere where there's a particular amount of buildup, greasiness, griminess, soap scum. This works like a charm. This essentially replaces what you would call a cream or a powdered cleanser. So here we go. You're gonna take a container and you're gonna make up the amount of product that you need on demand. So you're not making a bulk amount of it ahead of time. You're only mixing up how much you need. So what you'll do is you're gonna mix equal parts dish soap and baking soda into a bowl. You can add a little bit of water to it, a few drops here and there, and keep stirring it until you get it to a pudding-like consistency. And for added fun and value, you can throw in about 10 drops of your favorite essential oil. Now, when it comes to cleaning the bathroom, I always like to pack in an extra mold and mildew resistant antibacterial punch, which means I'm putting in 10 drops of tea tree essential oil. But if you would prefer to use another one, lavender is a great option, as is peppermint or eucalyptus. Have fun with it, be creative. The point is, it's an incredibly effective scrub, it's easy to make, and it's very inexpensive. And once you have this made up, you'll take your dampened sponge, you'll apply it to whatever surface you need clean using the S pattern. You want your sponge to be really, really wet. Then you're just gonna let that sit for a few minutes. As we know, pre-treating does all the work for you. And when you're ready, you'll go back, flip your sponge over the scrubby side, scrub it on down with the S pattern, give it a nice rinse, polish it dry. You've cleaned like a pro for pennies. This is a tip. Chad and I actually figured this one out a long time ago when we were trying to figure out how to clean his uh, gamer controls. They get so crusty and we folded up a tiny post-it note and we used the pointiest corner to kind of scrape out all of the gunk in and around the areas where those game controllers have seams and like your, your hand sweat gets in there. It's a great way to clean all of your electronics, remotes, uh, keyboards, as he said, anything where your hands are constantly touching and dirt can get in there. If they're tight grooves and hard to reach, that folded corner is really gonna make a difference. This is a pretty easy one and it kind of peps you up while you're vacuuming. As you know, vacuuming is my least favorite cleaning task. And that is simply taking some essential oils and dashing it onto the filter of your vacuum cleaner. Now, if you use a bag model vacuum cleaner, you can actually put a few drops of essential oil onto or into the bag, just dash it in. And as the vacuum is working, you'll notice it lets off a mild scent, which is kind of pleasant. And by the way, this is one of the tips that we got from a Clean My Space community member on a video that we did a while back. So thank you for that great tip. So if you need to clean your blender, there's a very simple way to do this. You wanna start by giving it a cursory rinse just to get rid of any remnants. Then you can squirt in about a half tablespoon of dish soap. Fill it about halfway with water, close it up, pop it on the base, and set it to blend for 30, 45 seconds. This motion alone will scrub the inside of the jug, doing all the work for you. Then give it a good thorough rinse and allow it to dry. Glass cutting boards are pretty impervious to odors, but plastic and wood, you've been there, you know, they get smelly. And if you notice that your cutting board is smelly, it's telling you that there is some bacteria on that surface. 
that needs to be dealt with. So a really easy way to deal with it is to use straight hydrogen peroxide, spray it on the surface, let it sit for five to 10 minutes. Then give your cutting board a good cleaning with soap and water, rinse it well and allow it to dry. The hydrogen peroxide used straight will definitely take care of that odor causing bacteria. And some people, what they will do so that they can just quickly access their bottle of hydrogen peroxide is they will remove the screw cap altogether and put on a spray bottle nozzle and leave that with their cleaning arsenal. So that way you still get the benefit of the hydrogen peroxide in a brown bottle, but you have it in a much easier to use application. If you use dryer sheets and you want to find a second life for them before you pitch them, why not use them to clean your baseboards after they come out of the dryer? You might notice that they're not as stiff, they're a little more crinkly, and they don't have any of that coating on them. Well, that's a good thing when it comes to cleaning baseboards. Your dryer sheets are still going to have some electromagnetic charge to them, which means they can attract dust, which is always a good thing when you're dusting. All you need to do is wipe your baseboards as you normally would with the used dryer sheet, and then when it's done, you can crumple it up with those dust bunnies, pitch it in the garbage, and know that at least you did a little bit of upcycling. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm at Melissa Maker. You probably know that in August, Chad and I went to beautiful Sedona, Arizona. And while we were there, we did some hiking, which happened to change my shoes from white to red. So when I machine wash the shoes, obviously they will go into the dryer as well. While they're machine washing, they've got to bang around and do their thing. But when they're in the dryer, they don't need to knock around as much because you know, it's noisy and it sounds crazy when you're drying your shoes. So there's a couple of easy ways that you can prevent all of that banging around from happening when your shoes go in the dryer. The first thing you can do is actually take your shoes by the laces, hang the laces over the door and then close the door so that part of the laces are still sticking out. This will keep your shoes from banging around during the drying cycle. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you can also put the shoes in a delicates bag and then you can hang a portion of the delicates bag outside of the door, close it, and then that will have the same effect. It doesn't matter how fabulous your dryer is. If your clothes have been sitting wet in your washing machine overnight or even for a few hours, and then you put them in your dryer, your clothes will come out with significantly more wrinkles than they would had you just taken your clothes directly from the washing machine as soon as it was finished and put it right into your dryer. This is just because as your wet clothes sit, the weight of the clothing and the moisture and the water just bears down and starts to imprint wrinkles. And no matter how great your dryer is, like I said earlier, it's not gonna be able to get all of those wrinkles out. So tip number one is just pay attention to your washing machine. When it is done, move that load over. Now let's say you do have some wrinkles and you wanna get rid of them. My easy go-to thing is I just have a garment steamer in my bathroom. It's a super small and compact one. And I will just take the garment, hang it up on the back of my bathroom door. I have a little hook that I got and I will quickly steam that garment and I'm good to go. But let's say you have a few garments that you want to freshen up and de-wrinkle. You can actually put them into the dryer with a damp garment. So let's say you have another shirt, it's wet or you wet it, you can throw all of that into the dryer, turn it on for about 10 minutes, and the moisture from that one damp garment will disperse throughout the other garment and help to loosen up the rest of the wrinkles. Just make sure that as soon as that dryer goes off, you pull the garments out and you hang them up. Cars are like little microcosms of our homes. And if you do any amount of driving, you're obviously aware of what your car smells like. Now, if you think about it, we're eating in the car, we're drinking in the car, just like our home, we're shedding dead skin cells, but our shoes are often bringing a lot of dirt into our cars. That dirt settles and it just leads to odors. So over time, your car can get kind of stinky and there's a great way to counteract that. You can simply take some essential oil and drop it onto the carpets or the rubber mats of your vehicle. Now, this is great because it not only helps to make your car smell a little bit better, and of course you can lower the windows, but if you use something that's invigorating like peppermint, it'll actually help keep you more alert while you're driving. So on that note, don't use something like lavender, which really chills you out. So now you have 21 new tools in your cleaning arsenal that you can access at any time. And that brings me to this week's comment question, which is, what's your take on the humble cleaning hack? 
Have you had good experiences with it? Or has it completely failed you? Let me know if you are pro or against cleaning hacks in the comments down below. Well, now that you know all the shortcuts, I also wanna teach you how to clean things like a cleaning pro. So you can check out this playlist right here, which will do just that. If you wanna support the Clean My Space channel, you can do so by subscribing to the channel by clicking that button, or and by visiting our store, Makers Clean, where we sell our premium microfiber products. And you can click this button right here to get there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.